up, what's up? This is the James in his podcast. What's up, what's up? This is the James in his podcast for May 21st, 2019. James in his podcast. James in his podcast. May 21st, 2019, baby. And here it goes. Crap. Yo, what's up? This is Jay Dennis. Jay Dennis Podcast. Tuesday, May 21st, 2019. I'd like to thank you guys for these uh, last couple episodes for working with me on this on this mission to figure out a theme song for the Jay Dennis Podcast. Kind of add a little value, add a little spice to this mix. You know, a little consistency. Because aside from the fact that I predominantly release these at least every Tuesday or Wednesday for the past three years, uh, I'd like to add some sort of other consistency to this. Maybe put in a little production. So part of my daily rituals is I work to commit at least 20 to 30 minutes a day getting on Guitar Pro and writing more of the Raptor Riot album. And I've got, I've made some headway on a lot of new music, which is fantastic. It's, you know, the power of consistency and persistence. And it's allowed me to have a couple little MIDI clips that you can listen to as teasers as I piece together this masterpiece. Um, also kind of getting through some uh, minorly difficult times the past week. You know, as I sit on the outside and watch other people kind of cope with difficulties or the negative parts of life and maybe not the best ways. I try not to judge or be critical. It's a little hard. You know, I'm just sitting there going like, well, why can't you be more positive like me? That's not the right way to go about it. And ultimately, I have to practice what I preach. So when things don't go my way during the week or during my sales career, I have to apply the same principles, which I do. And it's called the ultimate reframe where you take a negative situation and you go, hey, you know what? Whether somebody wants to work with me or not, that's fine. Oh, this person doesn't want to work with me because of one little detail? That's fine. I can requalify them, not be bitter, and say, hey, if they don't want to work with me, I don't want to work with them either. I'm not for everybody, and everybody's not for me. Move on, because there are significant, there's a significant amount of new opportunities on the horizon that I have worked hard to create and I'm not going to I'm not going to let one little sit back make me bitter and collapse. So practice what I preach and what I share on this podcast. If you want to learn more about some of the mindsets and some of the techniques and uh, progressions that I've learned and made, I would strongly recommend getting on the Modern Success mentorship group that I'm in. Imagine if you can make a small investment every month to double or triple your income if you you apply these principles. You don't just, you know, you don't, you don't just sit down and learn and, you know, think about practicing or think about action. You actually have to apply the damn principles and ideas that are taught and make the internal adjustments to your your mind brain to see benefits and receive dividends, which the past month I I have. Um also back on Instagram, um What I'm doing, though, which is what I've shared before, is I'm scheduling a small block of time every day to just put out the content, and that's it. So rather than being on my phone for a couple hours a day looking at social media, I spend maybe 10, 15 minutes every morning uh, having stuff that I've already created outside of social media, stuff that I've already created, and I I, I basically just blanket post right there and then let let it... run its course throughout the day and then I don't have to worry about that. You know, I have friends, people that I care about, but honestly, I don't want to see what other people are up to. It's because you get you get you get trapped. You get trapped in the addictive addicting cycle. It's not fun, it's not productive, but I'm also not stupid. I know this is partially the way of the future. So if I'm trying to run a successful business and media empire with Raptor Riot and this here podcast, I would be silly not to at least promote some of this on social media on a consistent basis. But it's about doing it intelligently. All right? I'm going to be a creator. I'm not going to be a user. Okay? Also put out a new YouTube video. Linkin Park's One More Light album just turned two this past Sunday. 
I was having some serious technical difficulties with my personal laptop, so I had the video ready and done on Sunday, but I wasn't able to upload the damn thing because of hardware issues, but finally got around it, uploaded it this morning, so go to the J. Dennis YouTube channel, subscribe, and see what that's all about. That's where the podcast lives. That's where you can listen to some of the Raptor Riot material for free. But more importantly, if you go to raptorriot.bandcamp.com, you can own the Sabotage DP for $2.99. You get three original tracks and a Limp Bizkit cover that's going to blow you away. And give in pretty much all the proceeds help tremendously towards creating the album, adding more value to the podcast, and allowing me to have more time to do this, this thing I love, talking into a phone and mixing it all together on a Tuesday. Of course, it is in conjunction with my sales career, my financial career. Everything I do is all together. There's no work and play with me. It's all love. It's all play. It's all fun. I don't get burnt out because I'm not burning at both ends. Yeah, so beyond that, I've taken up running again. Wait, again? When did I ever run in the first place? Wait, hold on a sec. Yeah, so beyond everything I just talked about, as I'm working... Oh, one sec. Do you need to come in? No, it's perfectly fine. This is a, this is this is a public space. You can oh, totally use. It. Closed, so That's all good. Yeah. So pardon that. I was using a public space that ended up not being public anymore, or private <laughs> anymore. No, it's all good. Uh, no, no, no. There's no need. There's no. There's there, there's no need for apologies. I think ninety percent of apologies are null and void. They're they're not. They're they're nonsense. They're just words. You know, we we, we think they're coming from a place of kindness or whatever but they're they're not necessary a lot a lot of the language we use is not necessary which is funny because you know you might be listening to this podcast and going how much of this is necessary well maybe i'll put out a survey and uh, take the temperature of the room how about that nah but the running has become a part of my daily routine in the past few weeks because i'm working super hard to get rid of these damn love handles, okay? I'm not an overweight guy. I'm in decent enough shape, and I got a decent amount of muscle, but I have to look at myself in the mirror and get real sometimes and go, hey, man, uh, you're not being as disciplined as you should be, and maybe it's time to change things up a little bit. Maybe the elliptical and the uh, stationary bike aren't enough. So I'm not really big on long-distance running or marathon running. A lot of those runners tend to screw up their legs and their feet and their ankles or their the shin splints or whatever. So I took my car out and just basically drove around a couple of blocks to figure out how long a mile was. And there's literally this perfect square where if I start in my house, I go straight for a certain amount of blocks, go right for a certain amount of blocks, and then just basically go in a square. It's basically a perfect mile. So if I do that once or twice a day, and one of those times I have my dog with me it makes a world of difference. So, you know, it's important that I'm in good enough shape to where running's not going to be a hindrance on me so that when the zombie apocalypse comes, I'll be able to handle that hurdle. But it's also a nice chance to get uh, reacquainted with some bands that I used to love, like Death Clock or Lamb of God. Like, you can try to front on metal music all you want, but that is easily the best music to lift weights and get aggressive to run the fast paced drumming like you can't mess with it but anyway thank you for listening thanks for having me on and we will reconnect soon peace yo it is wednesday morning may 15th 6 30 just left the gym Before I go further into this podcast, though, let me explain to you how the podcast works. Allow me to demonstrate, present to you, 
a presentation <laughs> of how the podcast works. Um, the way it used to be was I would sit on a nice setup with a microphone, with a audio studio, you know, software up, and I would just record the whole thing in one take, and I'd have my list of topics in front of me that I'd think about and compile during the week. And just do it all in one take, one nice little one hour or 40 minutes or hour and 20, however long they used to be. But now that I'm a little more on the go, <laughs> um, what I'm doing is I record 10 minute clips during the week because that's like the, the largest file that I can record on my voice memo thing on my iPhone before it doesn't allow me to like email it to myself and then create the whole podcast on um, Windows Movie Maker. So, um, and then I upload it to YouTube. So what you're hearing, the first clip you're hearing is, you know, the Tuesday of, you know, the actual day that the podcast is out, and then the following clips are from the week before. Uh, the week before, after the Tuesday that you heard the last podcast. So I do a podcast on May 7th. You're hearing everything from, like, April 30th or May 1st which is the day right after the previous podcast and everything leading right up to May 1st. But it's after the May 1st, or sorry, the May 7th intro clip, which is of that day. So, a little like a Quentin Tarantino movie, I guess. Little little tutorial there on how to listen to my podcast, so that way you know what the fuck, how the fuck the timeline works. Um, so yeah, I just did arms and back. Um, slowly but surely, fuck, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I am done. Like, this shit is live. I literally just had this revelation as I'm speaking. I am done! Saying slowly but surely. Okay? It's meant to be a humble expression that's like, oh yeah, I'm working my ass off. I got the long game in mind. It's like, no. I've been saying this shit long enough about my Raptor Riot album. I've been saying this shit long enough about putting this motherfucking podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Podomatic, whatever streaming services you use or podcast services you use slowly but surely getting back to the gym meditating streaks um I've been going to the gym more consistently the past couple weeks trying to offset these mother fuck this, there, there's gonna be a lot of fucks in this this clip um motherfucking love handles it never occurred to me how much I hate love handles. There have been like one or two seasons in my life where I got a little overweight. <laughs> and I just look at myself in the mirror and fat shame myself. And it works! I was listening to a podcast earlier. It's Brian Casella's Supreme Being podcast. He's the guy whose mentorship group I'm in. Uh, but his podcast is free. But the most recent episode, I think it's like 75. It's called Be a Boss. And it is literally about the state of, like, culture we're in, where we have to pussyfoot around and not be real with each other. Like, if I'm fat, I want somebody to tell me I'm fat. Hey, am I getting a little chubby? Yes! But you have to play this song and dance with women, with other people. I, I say women first because, you know, you never, never talk to a woman about her weight. Oh. She has two kids. Yeah, that was 18 years ago, Karen. Are you still recovering from those two kids you had 18 years ago? <laughs> I get it. Some maternal things are extremely difficult to reverse or can't be reversed. If you got stretch marks because of pregnancy, that probably ultimately adds to your maternal beauty. I'm not slamming that. I'm not slamming what can't be controlled, okay? But for the majority of us men out there that don't have diabetes, uh, don't have some sort of thyroid problem, so basically 99% of people, men and women, that are fat, you can control it. And if it's not 99%, oh, sorry, that was a little harsh. Is it 94%? No, that's a little low. Is it 97%? Is it 3% of obese fucks that can't get their shit together? 
Well, I'm not talking about the exceptions to the rule. I'm talking about the rule. I've had to learn this shit with sales where it's like, oh, what if I create this, you know, instance where something could go wrong? What if I get a door slammed in my face? It's like, yeah, what if that happens one in a hundred times? Why do we focus on the one exception versus everything else. And this is why anecdotal claims when you're, you're arguing with somebody are bullshit. Almost as much bullshit is that anti-abortion law that Alabama just passed. Great job, Alabama. First of all, you almost elect a pedophile to the Senate last year. Great, good, good, good on that. And he's still around. Like, fuck off, Roy. But now, because of states' rights, we get to be inconsistent and incongruent with the rest of the country Which, yeah, you're Alabama. You should have your own identity on some level. But really, you're going to scale it back several, several centuries to preserve some bullshit religious reasons? What about separation of church and state? And more importantly, what about women's rights? Oh, yeah, we're going to make it so that even if a woman is raped, she has to carry the rapist's baby. Oh, and incest, too. So that's going to be very common in Alabama. So, you know, when Bubba and Charlene are, you know, fucking for the 18th time that week, you know, hey, Ma, you want to come join in? Hey, Ma, my sister's giving it to me real good. Ma, you got to get, Ma! (laughs) Oh, shit. We went and done had another baby. We we best best get to the, we got got to get to the clinic. We got, got, got to get to the clinic. Oh, oh, Bubba, we can't, we can't go to the clinic anymore because the doctor's going to get fined 99 years in prison if he performs one of those abortions on you. Great job, Alabama. Great job. Am I making fun of the victims? Maybe. But should I make fun of the, uh, what, the state legislator or whoever the fuck passed it? It, it? it blows my mind. It blows my mind how inconsistent, like, the states can act versus like the federal level like there has to be some level of congruency or some consistency between those have some sort of federal standard so that certain states aren't leeching off of other states you know you got fucking California and New York two of the larger economies California being the fifth largest economy in the world mind you you got these massive blue states with higher electoral uh, higher electorates subsidizing all these red states that cut taxes (laughs) but they need more money because the blue states are paying more in taxes. So it's kind of funny. They like to slam those states, but they're actually being subsidized by them. By the way, I say electorate, and I don't believe in that. I don't believe in the electoral college. I think it's bullshit. Um, Democrats have won the last nine out of the ten popular votes, yet somehow they only walked away with a handful of the presidencies because of our broken electoral system. And wasn't it the current president that said back in, like, 2012 when Obama got reelected, Oh, the electoral college is a hoax! Because that's how he talks. Uh, but then he won the electoral vote. Nothing to say about that. Hey there, Trump. Hey! Hey! All right, so I kind of went off on a tangent there. The uh, point of this clip is that we're kind of just pussyfooting around and not being real with each other, and it's kind of causing our society to collapse. Everybody's hiding behind their phones, their social media, being super passive-aggressive. If something bad happens to you or something minor inconvenience happens to you at, like at a gas station, instead of confronting the problem and just dealing with it head-on, face-to-face or face-by-face, we have to go on social media and I got to rant. I'm a 32-year-old woman and I'm going to pray again and go viral. You think you can talk to me like that? I'm going to post a video and get you fired. I'm going to find out where you work. (sighs) So if you want to listen to the rest of the podcast, enjoy that. Uh, Go to the raptorriot.bandcamp.com to download the Sabotage GP. Uh, Download that to uh, help subsidize this podcast so we can get more of this beautiful art. Uh, Keep drinking that gallon of water a day. Work out. Meditate. Uh be better and have a great day Uh, what yeah yo what's up it's a Saturday May 18th 2019 11 a.m. you know a huge thing I'm working on Um, for my podcast from just 
my overall speaking in general. Eliminating the word um uh from my vocabulary. For my vocabulary. Yeah, that's a strong word, vocabulary. Now, I am heading to the Home Depot right now to get the last couple of concrete bags that I need to finish these uh, walkways. Just need to make two more and then we'll be able to put the uh, lava rock down. And as I'm lugging things back and forth, fortunately I live really close to Home Depot, um, as I'm lugging things back and forth, I'm like, damn, I really want a pickup truck. Now that my life is a lot closer and I really don't put much mileage on my car like I did when I was in college driving, you know, 30 minutes to and fro, you know, university all day, all week. Now that my life is pretty much in a whole uh, one mile radius, gas mileage isn't as big of a deal for me. But I find myself with some of these projects and of course with the uh, onsot onsot is that is that a word? I haven't done one of these in a few days, so I'm a little rusty. Enjoy. With the idea of lugging things coming up, especially with like my band and other projects coming up, a four door sedan, which both my wife both have, we both have, both of our cars are paid off. And we're not looking to take on new cars and new car payments. We're taking, looking to cash flip both of these cars. And with my career, I have the ability to do that. I must produce to make that happen, and I have the means to do it. My income potential is unlimited. But with unlimited, you know, reward and potential comes unlimited, on some level, liability and uh, responsibility. So as I'm in an entrepreneurial setting where I do have certain standards and rules and compliance I have to follow, it's like 98% on me to do everything else. I don't have somebody breathing down my neck telling me what to do. I don't have, you know, that guy from office space going like, yeah, um, I'm going to need you to stay late today. Like, I don't have that concern and I never will again. But I've been a big thing that I've been adopting and figuring out the past couple weeks, and it's led to more tangible and more clear goals and ideas. Is I need to be measuring everything I do. Since I don't have a set schedule or a set metric for a lot of things, I need to track them myself. How many hours am I working a week? How much business am I producing? I know how much income I'm making because I track my my budget, my income, and my expenses every month. I've been doing that for almost two years now. Changed my life having a budget. And when you realize how mediocre the average person is, it makes it so easy to get ahead. <laughs> it makes it so easy to get ahead. The fact that most Americans don't have like a couple hundred dollars in savings and it it, it makes me sad because we've all been conditioned and brainwashed into thinking that we need to be these, you know, consumers and these uh, lifelong debtors or deadies, whatever you want to call it, to where, oh, I just paid off my car, time to get on the wheel again and do it again. It's like, no, never having a car payment again. And when I pay off my house, never having a mortgage again. This shit's one and done. I was blessed that my first two cars were gifts and no payments, super low insurance. This car that I'm currently driving will be the last car that I ever have a payment on again. So now that I know what type of trucks I want, I know the price range and I know what I need to shoot for, but like... I've always known what my goals were for my business, and that's that's what this podcast is about, is I want to talk about, like, my vision, is when it comes to the why and, like, the inner game of me and my business and everything, that's where I have a huge advantage. Like, my inner game, you cannot fuck with. My mindset 
is unbreakable compared to a lot of people. I, I, there's a lot of beliefs that I hold that are well above the, uh, well ahead of the curve, and a lot of ambitions that I am zero percent afraid to share. Oh yeah, you know when I was a, a meager bank teller making under thirty thousand a year, I'm gonna quadruple, or I said double or triple my income in my first year, all commission. And I've already done that. Oh, well, you know, that's a, that's a lofty goal. <laughs> yeah? You really think it's a seriously lofty goal to want to make six figures your first year when it's a totally doable goal? If somebody says my goals are lofty, that's awesome. That means that I'm heading in the right direction. Why not fucking shoot for the stars when you know that you can, you can, you can do it? What the f- fuck is this shit show? Uh, um, I almost like choked on some hummus just now. Even though I haven't eaten hummus in six minutes. Dude, you cannot fuck with hummus. That stuff is so good. It's so filling. It's so nutritious. Where do vegans get their protein? Two words. Hummus. You shan't be fucking with hummus. But basically, yeah, I've been measuring everything. Uh, I know... I know how, you know, I want to pay off my debt and everything this year and what it's going to take, what I have to make every month to make it happen. I know, I know all the numbers. There's no arbitrary nonsense going on with me. I know everything. And then, um, I know how much the, there, there, there's two trucks I want. I'm not going to buy them both at the same time. It's either one or the other, but one's kind of a more modest purchase. The other one is I'm shooting for the damn stars purchase and I know how much either both of them cost and when I go to that dealership and say yeah I'm paying cash oh you want to do some financing fuck that I'm paying cash I have more negotiating power now um now that everything is measurable and tangible all I have to do is reverse engineer these lofty goals and take it down to a day-by-day action which is totally doable and then I have to track everything so that Everything that's tracked uh, improves. But yeah, so... Life's gotten a lot better. And you know, sometimes it's tough, sometimes it's scary. Not knowing when you're going to get paid, but like... I don't remember exactly who said it, but it was basically like 90... At least 90% of your problems can be solved by overly prospecting, which for me is meeting people and trying to find business. And the past couple weeks, I've been ramping up my efforts consistently on a daily basis, and things haven't been, like, falling into place, but things have been getting done, and it's creating peace of mind, and, like, I need to keep going. I can't settle and go, like, well, I had a big payday. It's time to coast for a while. It's like, no, motherfucker, you need to get ahead. All these ideas about like, oh yeah, you know, your 20s, you should have fun and then work hard for the next couple decades to, you know, retire with no money. Oh, you need to have, you know, work and life balance. You know, you know, what do you do for fun? It's like everything I do is congruent with each other and everything I do is interconnected with each other. I am always on when it comes to my career. If I'm talking to somebody at a, at a social gathering, a fun, you know, you know, a fun event, there's a high chance my, my career is going to come up and I'm going to say, yeah, this is what I do. You know, I'll talk to them about it and I'll be like, hey, who do you know that might, you know, that, even if they don't do business with me personally, I'm still going to ask them for referrals. I'm always on because I love what I do and I'm totally able to do that without, you know, appearing desperate or appearing like just, you know, a cut and dry businessman. Like it's all together and a big thing that's been improving with me the past week and it's going to keep happening, is that I've committed at least uh, half an hour. It starts off as 15 minutes, but it always goes into a half hour because I end up having a lot of fun. Um, golden doodles are such beautiful dogs. Um, as I say, for 15 minutes every day, I'm going to commit to getting on Guitar Pro and writing uh, some Raptor Riot music. And basically, I have, in the past week, gotten a lot more of 2019 done. It's a song. So be on the lookout on the clips for a teaser clip of that. It's a lot more complete at this time. And then Jaybird's going to be releasing some new music this year, along with Broke Ass.
yeah. Got a little bit of Risk playing from Megadeth. Has it been 20 years since this album came out yet? I'll have to double check the uh, release date. But yeah, a lot of people think this is Megadeth's worst album, but I definitely see the value in it. I don't know if I would consider this their worst album, but it's definitely like in the bottom three. But I got a pretty strong bias. I like all their albums. So yeah, Sunday morning, 10.30. Just left church, going to go to the gym, do some legs. It would appear that for at least the next month, I am done pouring concrete in my walkway. So I mean, long story short, our main line from our house to our sidewalk uh, was leaking pretty bad, so we had to get it replaced. Cost a couple grand. Uh, the plumbers did not do the best job patching it up. I don't know if I handled it in the best possible way, but that's what life is. You live and you learn. And uh, my wife and I made the best of a bad situation, so I dug everything up. Not as deep as they did to the, to the, to the pipe, but I dug out that top layer. And, you know, Nevada soil is super, you know, for every couple grains of dirt, there's like a massive rock, so it's not... It's not the easiest stuff to excavate and smooth out, but made it work and created a walkway and it's got six big concrete pavers, you know, steps, and then we're going to fill in the gaps with uh, lava rock and it's going to lead to a patio that we're creating also and then the front yard's going to have a nicer little aesthetic to it. Um purpose of this uh, clip of the podcast. Aside from showcasing Prince of Darkness, which if anybody were to give Risk a chance, this is typically the song that people are like, okay, this song has one, or this album has one song I can tolerate, and it's usually this one. It was the one that they put on their first Greatest Hits album. And then they put Wonderlust on Warheads on Foreheads, which was an interesting choice. (laughs) Um, There's a video that, like, reflects on this album, and he actually makes fun of, like, the grumbling that Dave Mustaine does between the... Um, I just want to share how empowered I am and how many like nasty phrases not like hateful phrases but just they're nasty to yourself how many phrases I've shed how many words how many negative deep seated ideas I've, I've, I've shed recently because I would say since I was at least like maybe even 16 but around the age of 20 my confidence started skyrocketing and my true friends started exposing themselves. I had to start weeding out the weaker people in my life, which is totally fine. That's a part of life. And then the haters started coming. And then the identity started to be needing to be figured out. The plans, long-term plans started being developed. So like this whole decade, my 20s, has just been a, you know, a complete, you know, developmental uh, road. You know, with roadblocks, lessons learned, tables churned. And the big picture is, was I got a lot of shit figured out. But what about all the minor tweaks? What about any uh, negative self-talk or language? Like the little things that accumulate into, you know, still into some day-to-day mediocrity. Again, one advantage that I've had for a long time is the, uh, the big picture, you know, what I want what I'm working towards, my why. I've I've had that figured out for a long time, but it's the day-to-day stuff. It's the specifics. It's the systems. It's the, it's the, uh, the metrics that I use to, uh, track progress that have been needing to be tweaked and figured out. And overall getting into sales and getting good at it, getting better at it has really exponentialized 
all these tweaks and has like revealed the ones that I've needed to make. So there's certain language that I am getting rid of. Like you, you may hear on another clip that I kind of yell at myself for saying slowly but surely. Oh, I'm slowly but surely getting back to the gym more often. It's like, how long have I been saying this on this podcast? Same thing with like slowly but surely, you know, working towards uh, getting my Raptor Riot album written. So I don't say that anymore. I don't try anymore. I do. I work. I don't say, yeah, I'm trying to uh, do better. I say, I, I'm working on improving. <laughs> this dog literally has his head. Ugh, dogs are funny. Um, by the way, how much does Prince of Darkness remind you of, like, Avenged Sevenfold? Um... I'm working tremendously hard on removing the word just out of my vocabulary. I'm just checking to see if uh, you got my voicemail. Oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, you know, it kind of, it's kind of a weak, it's kind of a weak word. I just need to, replacing the word need with must. I just need to make sure you got my voicemail, you know, you just need to get some life insurance. We must get together and talk and figure out what the best solution for you moving forward is. Need, just, they're they're all little tiny things, but they accumulate into uh, weak language. And I'm not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. Also working on getting rid of filler shit, like going, uh, you know, in between words or, um, you know, when it's my turn to talk at my networking group or at Toastmasters, I don't go, hey guys, it's Jared, quick, uh, quick, uh, announcement, um, even though I know what I want to say, or I've practiced it, as soon as I get the mic, it's like, hey guys, just want to, um, you know, like, none of that. So I intend on carrying myself as a king, as a leader. one of those albums that when Dave Mustaine went to remaster it, it really took away a lot of the, uh, (laughs) it took away a lot of the value of the original version. When I went and bought some of these hard copies of a few of Megadeth's uh, 90s albums, I, I acquired two of the original kinds, not the remastered versions. The originals are better even though I fell in love with the remastered ones, but then I ended up finding the originals and found more value in them. They sound more raw, they sound better. But, it's all a big reframe. It's all a big reframe of how we look at things. And it's not my it's not my job to kind of be on the outside and judge people and go like, oh yeah, I used to think like that. Sometimes I can't help but cringe that people still hold a lot of these limiting beliefs like age plays a construct or it plays a massive role in working with some people or obviously there's going to be some people that don't want to work with me because I'm younger but if I can't get past that I don't want to work with them either I'm going to find somebody else that I can influence and get over that but a big thing I've been working on is instead of trying to tell people things, I ask them questions and make them figure it out for themselves. Have them figure it out for themselves. Because I want to be the best speaker. And in a lot of ways, I am the the best speaker. And now that I have more quantifiable goals, they're not just these ideas like, I want to pay off my debt even though I know how much I have and I already have a game plan on how to break it down and pay it off by a certain time. But everything else has to be quantifiable too so that it can be reverse engineered into smaller bite-sized daily, weekly, monthly goals. But a big idea that I've learned is it's great to have a year goal or two year or five year goal, but instead of having, you know, like a year long system, you have a quarter long system. So you try to achieve your year goals in a quarter 
that makes you work harder and it gives you like a nice shorter uh, time horizon to make it more possible. So enjoy the rest of the podcast. I got a lot I want to say and I'm going to make it as succinct and as digestible for you because I know there's a lot of value in what I'm sharing. It's just a matter of getting it out to everybody, to the right people and to the people that want to hear it. What's up, friendos? It's still Sunday. You ever go and drive thinking you're in reverse? It's pretty cute. Good thing nothing happened. Or vice versa. I talk a lot about mindset and, you know, your inner power and your foundation. But if I talk about that 100% of the time and don't sprinkle in some techniques and some practices in there, which... You know, on past clips, I, of course, have talked about meditation and the type of working out that I do and uh, other streaks that I maintain to accumulate into greatness. But I was just grocery shopping. Uh, This technique will help you long-term with your pocketbook or your wallet or your bank account, whatever you want to call it, your purse, your man purse. What's the most efficient way to go grocery shopping? Here's here's an idea. The example that I just applied this with was that I needed laundry detergent. And I only buy the free and clear kind. I don't buy any of that scented stuff. I only buy the free and clear kind. No perfumes, dyes, or any of that stuff. So I have a very specific type of laundry detergent that I need. And I'm at a grocery store, which is basically the Publix of the West... Where, you know, it's higher service, but you're typically paying a little more than you would at, like, Walmart or Target or something. Um, but I saw, usually when you buy in bulk, or you go to purchase the larger thing, it's usually more economic. You know, you should only buy the big thing if you know you're going to use it more. That's why people go to Costco or any other type of warehouse store. Two of the uh, laundry detergent products that I wanted. One was $12.99. It was the larger one and it was on sale. And then another one was half the size, but it was more than half off the uh, bigger one. So the way to do the math is to figure out what is the uh, cost per ounce, which pretty much every price tag at a grocery store is going to show that. It's going to say price per ounce. So I compared the two and this one was like 50 or 60 cents less per ounce. And I was like, okay. Usually when I buy laundry detergent, I buy more at a time to make it last a few months. But in this case, I'm going to just forego a little cost and get the smaller one. And then later down the road, when I need more, I'll find a more cost-efficient larger one because I'm not exactly the best store right now. But I ended up saving a little more by going for the smaller one, which usually that's not the case. But you look at the cost per ounce... And it shows you in cents, and you compare them, and if you're like, oh, the uh, it's actually more than like 50 cents or a couple cents or whatever per ounce, it, it can make a difference. And of course, usually go for store brand too, but a lot of times they'll put discounts on their uh, national brands or whatever, but I don't care how wealthy I ever get, I'm probably always going to be going for the store brand. Because I don't have this brand loyalty. Like, what the fuck is brand loyalty? Like, um, you go to a restaurant and they're like, yeah, can I get a Coke? Um, we don't have Coke. Is there a Pepsi here? Is Pepsi okay? Oh, no. You're not getting a tip now because you asked me, a Coke man, a man who has brand loyalty to Coca-Cola, the, you know, most cancerous drink known to man, if I wanted Pepsi instead, all I didn't want was a Pepsi, just no Pepsi. Brand loyalty is fucking stupid. Unless you really like the finer things in life. And like, you drive a sports car and you got brand loyalty to Lamborghini over Ferrari or something. I get that. You know, for the more upscale things, I get that. But for like the little consumer goods, you know, if you want to have some loyalty, that's fine. But for people to go out and tout their brand loyalty, it's kind of silly. Anyway, so that, that, that that's a pretty effective way... 
it's a little bit at a time, but over time it accumulates into saving probably hundreds of thousands of dollars a year if you're intentional about what you do. If you kind of just go in there and go, you know, go wild without a list, then you're going to spend more. So it's always good to have a tangible measurement or metric to, uh, you know, save money or lose weight or whatever. It's always good to have a plan. And that's a great way to save money within the plan. And the past couple weeks, another thing I've been executing, this isn't about money. This is about, this is about communication and about how you carry yourself. When you walk around, do you have a kind of just a pissed off or, you know, resting bitch face look on your face? Or are you approachable? Is there, do you have a sense of magnetism or charisma or gravitas behind you? You don't have to have a big goofy smile on, but if you kind of you have a much less punchable, punchable looking face if you kind of just have a, a gentle smile on your face. People don't perceive that as threat, as a threat. Every person I walk past, if we make eye contact, I have a small smile on my face because I'm happy. I'm happy to be alive. I'm walking around with a sense of gratitude and happiness about me. Fellow man, uh, fellow men are going to perceive me as a threat because I don't have a pissed off look on my face like I want to fight them. I have a, I have a gentle smile on my face that says I'm not a threat. Same thing with women. Are women more likely to, even though I'm married, but I still want to be approachable and I still want to, you know, kind of be on all the time. Women are less likely to be intimidated by a, you know, physically larger and stronger man if he has a gentle look on his face and he's smiling. Or he looks happy rather than pissed off. So a big thing I've been practicing is walking around with a smile because I am happy. And beyond that, if somebody makes eye contact with me, I I would say it's it's increased greatly because I've become more intentional about this. It's increased from probably like 25% to almost 90% because I still occasionally look away. But for the most part, if somebody makes eye contact with me, I don't break. I keep looking, and I keep a smile on my face. And again, it's not a big, doofy smile, but it's just a, hey, I'm approachable. I'm not a threat, but I'm demonstrating power by doing that. I'm demonstrating authority, and it's not, it's not like, a, it's not like I'm, I'm squaring up and I'm toughening up. Or In some cultures, that's huge. Like, I believe that's really huge in like the uh, Hispanic culture. Uh, culture is like not breaking eye contact or whatever and I'm not saying gangs or anything I'm automatically because of Hispanics but um, and like gang culture another culture like the whole you know tough look on your face and not breaking eye, talk, eye, eye contact thing is huge and that's kind of the extreme that's not what I'm talking about but in a more gentle sense where I'm leading because like what's going to happen are they going to stare me down and be like what? what are you looking at and then punch me in the face. So no. I find that it's greatly increased my confidence and made me a lot more approachable to kind of just have a smile on my face and when I, I make eye contact with somebody, I don't break it. Now, I'm not seeking that out. I don't look at every person I walk past and, like, challenge them. But, like, if somebody is in my eyesight and they look at me while I, I catch them, I happen to catch them, then I, I do that. But again, I'm not seeking it out. I'm not like walk, going out of my way to find somebody to, you know, do this little, you know, chicken race with to see who breaks eye contact first. But it's really increased my confidence. And even when certain streaks of mine break and it kind of causes my energy to go down or my overall constitution to temporarily weaken this consistent practice has allowed me to maintain some sort of consistency and allow me to, even when I'm feeling down or feeling not as bright or as bubbly, this allows me to maintain some level of, it's like a common thread that's just going through and helping me maintain this. So let's review when you're out shopping for groceries, which is a huge bill for many people, price per ounce, check the price per ounce on the price tags. If you're comparing products, See what works for you. Ultimately, you'll save some money. Instead of spending 50 bucks, I spent 32, which is nice because again, it adds up. It's especially it's, it's like it's like porn for analyticals too. You like numbers, you like math. And then when you're out and about, you want to build your confidence. 
kind of just walk around with a sense of gratitude and smile. Just like your natural smile, just smile. You'll be a lot more approachable and there's a high chance that even whether or not you're in sales or not, you want more people in your network. You want more friends. You want more quality relationships. And how are you going to get that if you're not approachable? And it's going to help you be a lot less awkward too because most people I talk to, including myself at times, but at least I'm aware of it, um, extremely awkward. Got the same pre-programmed language all the time. Hi, how are you? And I say, I'm having the best day ever. How about you? I don't say, I'm good, thanks, uh, plastic's fine. I'm working on breaking out of all this robotic language that is basically, if you play video games, NPC language. NPC means non-playable character, but it's basically just like the generic scripts that they give characters in games to where like you walk up and they say the same thing every time. I don't want to be an NPC. I want to be the goddamn protagonist of the game, lead, level up, and fucking win.